newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Among them, the Apaches on the Southwest frontier in the 1880s, the most ferocious Indian warriors in North America. And of all their noted war chiefs, none was more feared by white soldiers and settlers alike than the fierce and cunning Geronimo. that a posse had caught an Apache who was being held prisoner at Fort Simon. I was bringing down the watchman who was shot the week before. If he could identify the Indian, we would bring him to the territorial seat to stand trial for robberies and murders recently committed along the railroad. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective. We wanted to let Geronimo know that the citizens of the territory, as well as the Army, were out to stop him. Howdy, Colonel. Oh, Matt Clark, I've been expecting you. This is Joe Burns, depot watchman. Clark, supposing you can't identify the Indian who raided the station, what do you intend to gain by taking him back? He'll get a fair trial, and if he's guilty, he'll hang. Maybe then Geronimo and his cutthroats will think twice before coming too close to the towns and railroads. In other words, you're going to succeed where the Army failed. I'm sorry, Colonel, I didn't mean to draw that inference. You're doing the best you can. But if we can help you along now and then, I'm sure you're not going to turn us down. Only a fool would insult his allies, Mr. Clark. Bring him in. Stand over there. He's one of the Indians the posse brought in. Recognize him? Yeah. He's one of the no-good Indians that raided the station. Say to Seguro, kill him or two! What'd he say, Colonel? He says he should have made sure of the watchman and killed him. You're a tough one. Who are you? You're so nichi. He had a cheese. You have a daughter, Sito de Geronimo. Looks like you caught yourself a big fish here, Mr. Clark. He says he's Nietzsche, son of Cochise. He says he's one of Geronimo's war chiefs. And the Geronimo will come and rescue him. That's pretty big talk, Colonel. You know Indians better than I do. Do you believe him? Well, that's hard to say. But my only advice is you better not try taking him back alone. You'll give me an escort, then? I can't spare the men. My troopers are all out on patrol. But I think there's a wagon train coming through in the morning. I'll send a scout out to check for you. Wagon train? That's too slow, Colonel. Mr. Clark, anywhere you look out there is Geronimo country. You don't know it, but you're lucky you ever got through to here. You either take him back by the wagon train or you don't take him back at all. All right, Colonel, you win. Lieutenant, take your prisoner out and lock him up again. Yes. 
Indians. Why don't they give you enough troops to wipe all the Indians out? String every one of them up. The government tries to be fair. Unless the Apaches are on the warpath or caught in some specific crimes, they've got as much right to live as you and I. See you in the morning, Colonel. Good night. Morning, Colonel. Morning, Matt. You ready to move out? Yeah, if you say so. One of my scouts reported the wagon train about five miles out. They're going to bypass the fort. I'll give you an escort as far as the wagons. From there, you're on your own. Would that happen to be the one coming in from Santa Fe? That's right. Good. I've got a friend coming in with that outfit. Another railroad detective, Frankie Adams. Here comes your prisoner. Well, goodbye, Colonel. Good luck, Matt. Thanks. Bye, Colonel. sundown that evening, we sighted the wagon train coming in from Santa Fe. We joined them. Well, it's as far as you go, soldier. Thanks a lot. Howdy, miss. How about a cup of coffee for a tired old cowboy? Sure thing. God, it's awful hot, though. Mag! Ouch! Oh, I'm awful sorry. But that's what you get for sneaking up on me like an Indian. What are you doing out here, anyway? I'm taking an Apache backstand trial. I should have known. You mean you thought I came all the way through Geronimo country alone just to meet you? It's been done. I know that, but not this time. What's all this I hear about Geronimo's band? And this Apache prisoner. I thought you were in Tucson to appear against those two train robbers we caught last month. That's why the boss sent for you. I wondered why he took me off of that case. I got a new job. I'm supposed to stop the Apache raids on our depot and way stations. One man against Geronimo's whole tribe? <laughs> What's wrong with that? There's only one tribe, isn't there? about the Apaches hitting this train, Matt. We're not carrying anything they want. Besides, we're well armed. Yeah, I guess you're right. Better check my prisoner before it turn in. Good night, Frankie. Good night. Oh, Matt, what do you want for breakfast? Bacon and eggs over easy. That's sun up. Night. Good night. What is it, Matt? Patches. Indians. You sure you aren't seeing things? What about that? Take a look at that. 
Let's start woke up the camp on the way to Tell him to go back to bed. It wasn't nothing, folks. One of our boys just had a nightmare. Go on back to bed. These chains been nearly cut in two. The nerve of those cutthroats coming right up on a wagon train like this. We better stand and watch the rest of the night. I'll take the first hitch. Right. You know, I was kind of figuring Geronimo wouldn't attack this train. No, I'm not so sure. Everybody was nervous and up at daybreak. I made sure that our prisoner was still secure, then went over to see Frankie. Frankie, I thought I'd better come over and hitch up the horses for you. Thanks, Matt. I'll take care of the rest of these. Well, I guess I won't see you until after we reach Tucson tonight. I guess not. Looks like we're gonna have a busy day. I'm talking! I'm talking! I think so. How many men we lose? Not many. Frankie's been hit. What? What did it, Matt? We beat them off. I'm not so sure they got what they came after. Give me your knife, Joe. You're right out on this real hard. That air has got to come out. Souvenir for you, Frankie. All right, hold on real tight now. <clears throat> Bandage. What do you mean they got what they came for? The prisoner? Yeah. There's no need of my riding to Tucson tonight. I'm going back to Fort and take you to a doctor. I'll be all right, man. It's not that bad. I know you can, Frankie. The colonel sent out troopers looking for Geronimo, and that red killer's right here under his nose. That means the fort is unguarded. Nietzsche will tell Geronimo all about it. Somebody's got to warn him. You think you're strong enough to ride? Let's go.
Guard, take this girl in firmly. She's been hurt. I'll be down to see you as soon as I talk to the Colonel. All right, Matt. Sorry to break in like this, Colonel. Mr. Clark. The wagon train was attacked this morning at dawn. I lost Nietzsche. The wagon train attacked? That's right, and it could have been Geronimo. Geronimo? Why, that's impossible. The last I heard I of... guess he moves pretty fast, Colonel. Right now, he's less than 10 miles away from here. I'm no military man, sir, but if I were you, I'd get those troopers back here just as fast as I can. Well, they're due back today or tomorrow. But look here, Clark, you're not implying that this fort's in any danger, are you? I am. Ah, that's ridiculous. A handful of Indians? Why, a fort hasn't been attacked since Carrington was struck for the Sioux a few years ago. I know that, Colonel. But Geronimo got the prisoner I was taking to Tucson. No doubt Nietzsche told him that the fort was poorly guarded and unarmed. And Geronimo has got well over a hundred men. Look here, Clark. I've been soldiering a good many years, and if you think you're going to panic me into... Apache! What's this about Indians, Gatewood? That's right, sir. The scout came in with a report. I checked it myself. They're gathering just beyond the ridge. Must be over a hundred of them. Maybe all they want to do is talk, sir. No, we can't take any chances. Issue guns and 60 rounds of ammunition to every man in the fort, soldier and civilian. I'll direct the defense personally. Come along. Man your post! We'd have held them off that day, maybe not. But I'll always be grateful the troopers turned up when they did. The fight was furious what had lasted, but it was over in a matter of minutes. Geronimo fell back in disorder, and retreat turned into panic. What you say is true, Lieutenant Gatewood. Our reports are that Geronimo did lose a lot of men. His band was hurt and hurt bad. Well, Colonel, Geronimo staked everything on trying to take this fort, and he was whipped. He's been campaigning steadily for months, and he's tired and depressed. I tell you, sir, you'll never have a better chance. Uh, he's been defying the army for 10 years. And today, you 
seem to think he's ready to talk terms. I think so. I was in charge of the San Simon Reservation when Geronimo and his people were there. I know him, sir. I know him better than I know you. He'll trust me. That may be, Lieutenant. But can we trust him? Why not? The Army has nothing to lose. Except my life, maybe, in case I'm wrong. You'll go alone? Alone as a soldier. I'll need a guide, and a courier, and a packer. And a couple of Indian scouts to send on ahead to let Geronimo know I come in peace. He's convinced me, sir. I'd like to go along as a courier. All right, Lieutenant Gatewood. If I can clear this with General Miles, you've got yourself an assignment that I'd hesitate to take myself. Good luck to you. Thank you, sir. We moved south through Apache country for two weeks. Then one day near the end of August, 1886, south of the border near Fronteras, one of our scouts made contact with Geronimo's tribe. After a jittery trip, we were led to Geronimo's camp. Looking around, we knew that we were at the bandits' mercy. It's many months since you left the reservation, Geronimo. It's good to see you again. Scout, tell me you come to talk peace, Gatewood. That's right. General Miles wants to make peace. General Miles does not want to kill any more of your people. He says he is your friend. If General Miles is my friend, where has it been all these years? I have been very much in need of friend. You know what's best for your people, Geronimo. Otherwise, you wouldn't have let us come to talk with you today. What are your conditions? Geronimo, like all his people, is brother of grizzly bear, rattlesnake, the eagle, the land around us is big and belongs to all of us. It is big enough for all things that live except the white man. For the white man, even the whole earth is not big enough. He went on like that for the rest of the afternoon. If General Miles makes solemn promise, Geronimo will go. Near sundown, Geronimo had weakened and agreed to surrender to General Miles. And with that agreement, we knew that the 10-year war with the feared Apache in the Southwest was over. Geronimo no longer would ride and kill as he pleased. From now on, he would be the guest of the United States government. Matt, you can tell your boss the railroads and ranches will be safe from now on. Word just came from General Miles that Geronimo and his band are on the way to a reservation in Florida. Well, it's been good working with you, Colonel. Hope to see you again someday. Thank you. Bye, Colonel. Bye. Sale, Oklahoma, March 6, 1909. Geronimo, one-time scourge of the southwestern frontier, died here today of pneumonia at the age of 75. Geronimo, the Apache firebrand, extinguished forever.
newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Among them, the Apaches on the Southwest frontier in the 1880s, the most ferocious Indian warriors in North America. And of all their noted war chiefs, none was more feared by white soldiers and settlers alike than the fierce and cunning Geronimo.